Welcome back to Ramping Up Your English. We're using a content-based approach to help intermediate level English learners reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our thematic unit is animals, and today our focus is on zoos and on discussion skills. I have another video on zoos to share, but first I want to talk about discussion skills. I have to admit that it seems like discussions, like I used to have with people in the past, are a dead art in the United States. I can remember sharing my viewpoint and listening to the viewpoint of someone else in a way that left both of us enriched by the experience. These were very natural exchanges of ideas and viewpoints. While I never thought a lot about being respectful, in hindsight, we were respectful of each other. Furthermore, a discussion didn't start as a means of forcing people to my viewpoint. Contrast that to what happens so often today. Viewpoints that are different are usually dismissed as wrong, and the person who has those different viewpoints is treated like they must be weak-minded or even evil. That's what we call demonizing the person. Well, no one's enriched by such exchanges, and many are bullied into keeping their opinion to themselves. Voices are raised, speakers are interrupted, and anger is often the result. That's not the kind of discussion we'll be practicing today. Think of the discussion as a kind of informal debate. We'll be exchanging ideas and viewpoints based on an objective set of facts. We'll learn and practice the language that goes along with offering opinions in a respectful manner in this episode and the next one. That respectful discussion will involve the theme of zoos. The objective facts will come from an article from the Wikipedia on zoos. There are more academic sources for objective facts, but we're trying to keep things simple and focused on the language. Now, this book has lots of information about zoos and some great pictures of animals that are featured there. It's entitled American Zoos from Mallard Press. Photographs are by Alan Beer and text by Stephen Dale. Eighteen zoos are featured here. The National Zoo and the St. Louis Zoo are two that I visited. It also includes the Dallas View, the, the Dallas Zoo, I should say. Well, I've never been there, but my cousin Luke visited with his video camera. Now, because his camera had a barely charged battery, Luke had the challenge of covering as much of that huge zoo as possible in very little time. Here's the video about his visit using the footage he captured on his latest visit. Cousin Luke's mad dash through the Dallas Zoo starts with the penguins. These are penguins from the south coast of Africa. Here's a colorful ape, a mandrill. The enclosure goes deep, providing space for these animals to move around and feel a bit like they're at home. Zoos have to balance the needs of the animals with the desire of visitors to see them. This long distance view may be all you get as a zoo visitor, but then there's the close and personal. What's neat about this shot is the girl and others approaching the enclosure when she hears all the excitement. The Dallas Zoo has an extensive gorilla program with one group that's a family group and the other that's a group of bachelors. You wouldn't know it from this big guy, but the gorilla enclosure has an extensive amount of space for these groups to move around in. Wow, nice. Education is part of the zoo's mission. After reading about this impressive crane, seeing it enriches the experience at the zoo. The hot Texas summers are probably just fine for the Nile crocodile here. While few people feel a close kinship with crocodiles, 
Watching apes is not that different from seeing ourselves. It's not surprising then that we share a large percentage of our DNA. The Dallas Zoo is a great place to watch live animals and to ask questions about them. The Dallas Zoo, like many zoos in North America, has an aviary where visitors can see birds. Looking up at the rocks, Visitors see a clip springer, greatly resembling a mountain goat. The Dallas Zoo is the largest zoo in Texas. It's also the oldest. A great number of improvements have taken place since those early days back in the 1800s. The Dallas Zoo is accredited, meaning that it meets standards for quality of life for its animals and the safety of the visitors. The Dallas Zoo is involved in research as well as conservation efforts. It's part of a movement to save endangered animals and provide a place of safety and a chance to reproduce for those animals. Bringing color to the zoo, these lesser flamingos live here. Yes, they are very pink. They have no trouble sharing this space with ducks, like this mallard drake. And what zoo would be complete without elephants? We'll do what the visitors to the Dallas Zoo do, watch the animals.